Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Wigwam Gaming. I scroll through a lot of new and upcoming games on websites like itch.io or Steam's indie section just looking for things to review on this channel. As you might guess, the vast majority of it is to put it nicely, not worth talking about, in the sense that you shouldn't say anything if you don't have anything nice to say. Sometimes, you find a truly hidden gem. This was the case for me last year when I found Momodora Reverie Under the Moonlight. A Metroidvania with beautifully detailed pixel art graphics, hauntingly elegant music, and addicting and fun gameplay. After completing the game, I actually found out it was the fourth installment in the Momodora series. So I searched on Steam and I only found Momodora 3 was selling for two dollars. I dug a little deeper and found out that Momodora 1 and 2 were actually free games on itch.io. So I thought it would be fun to see how Momodora evolved over time from this free little game on itch.io to this full amazing release that was one of my favorite games of 2016. So first things first, Momodora 1. Momodora certainly comes from some simple roots. Released in 2010 by one of the hardest to pronounce names yet, Gilhem Ardeen Martins, Martins is tricky. The backstory we get here is minimal. Just a simple text that pops up when you start the game and reads, In the land of Koho, common are the sacrifices of maidens in hope of recreating the world as a better place to live. Not all accept the rituals though. An orphan girl who has lost her mother to these rituals entered a forbidden land in search of a particular item. The legend says that this sacred item can even bring the dead back to life, but for a certain price. The Momodora series uses the heroic mime trope, that is to say a main character in video games that apparently never speaks, but also never seems to have any trouble communicating for some reason. So most of the information we can gather throughout the game will be found through hidden items with cryptic descriptions. And that's about all we get to lay the framework of the series on, certainly leaving a lot of room to grow. But what about the gameplay? Well, I said it's basically just cave story. That's not my opinion either, the developer was very open about their love for Cave Story and how this essentially just started off as a love letter to that game. You can tell by the blocky subterranean areas you explore, the guns you collect to expand your arsenal along the way, the momentumless platforming, all the staples are there, and they work well, just like they did in Cave Story. The game is fun to play. It's short, but your first playthrough will probably be an hour or longer just based on how punishing this game is. It requires some memorization, tight platforming, and intelligent use of weapons. Speedrunners can get through the game in about 10 to 15 minutes, but I certainly could not. Momodora 1 certainly starts us off what feels like miles away from what our end product will be with Momodora 4. That is by no means to say it's bad, just very different. We're starting off with a game that is basically a cave story fan game, but with a few twists to the story and characters. Momodora does set up a few staples of the series though. For starters, our main character Isadora will definitely be coming back in future installments, although maybe not in the way you're guessing. The religious ideas that are touched upon are going to grow into being more dominant themes of the series. Momodora questions the power that we choose to give religion over our lives and some of the traditions that that entails. We also see right away that this is a series that centers around women. Almost all of the characters, from our main playable protagonist to the boss monster she fights at the end, are all female and possibly one of the most important things that we see throughout the series, the Maple Leaf as your primary melee weapon. In this game, it gets quickly outshined by many guns and rocket launchers you can collect along your journey, but it will come back more important than ever in future installments. Overall, Momodora 1 was Ardeen's first ever completed project according to the itch.io page, and I certainly just have to say, kudos to them. It's a really solid first product for a developer. I would definitely give it a recommendation, but, Let's move on to Momodora 2. This one is also free and came out in 2011 just a year later. Instantly, you'll notice that this game steps up the visuals quite a bit. Starting to distance themselves from Cave Story, Ardeen has really started to develop their own unique style, which I like, but we still have a ways to go to get to Momodora 4. Ironically enough, in the readme text of this game, Ardeen states that you can call this a fan game, an homage or a ripoff of Cave Story, whatever makes you happy. But I felt that this game not only visually, but in the gameplay itself, really separated itself from Cave Story, at least a lot more than the first game did. We start to see some more Metroidvania elements going into play, and we ditch the guns entirely. 
This is one of the first huge steps towards Momodora becoming what it is today. The guns in the first game felt so out of place to me knowing what Momodora 4 was, and ditching them to focus on melee based combat with your series staple Mabel Leaf really starts to give Momodora its own unique identity. In this game you also get collectible and throwable projectiles in the form of these scrolls. Enemies drop them and you can use them to destroy blocks, solve some puzzles, or just as distance combat if an enemy is giving you too much trouble. This combat system will be expanded upon in future games, but this is where we truly see it start to take shape. No more changing weapons as you go, just a melee primary weapon with a secondary projectile that's available to you at all times. You'll spend your time in Momodora 2 exploring this vast and maze-like world. This game introduced the map to the series, and thankfully it did because this game would just be a confusing mess without it. In this game, our goal is to pray at all four statues to gain the power to access the final boss and smite evil from our land. The evil this time around is actually the main protagonist from the last game! Bum, bum. That's right, after the events of the first game, your character Isadora was not only unable to bring her mom back to life, but on top of that was cursed into becoming the new underworld queen for trespassing in the sacred lands. This game also introduces multiple endings to the mix. With the basic ending, you will kill the underworld queen and set all right with the world again. But in the good ending, you can actually cleanse Isadora of her evil and she will return home with you. Expect multiple endings from future games as well. Something I am always a fan of, quite frankly, and I think it works really well in Momodora, given its many hidden collectibles and secret paths that you can explore. This time around, the music has been done by Electro Bear, and it feels like a huge step up. The music in the first game was solid enough, but this game really starts to give Momodora its haunting feeling. Momodora is a game about a world ruled by a harsh and cruel religion. We spend our time exploring uninhabited and forbidden lands that are infested with monsters and demons. This is a series that would take away a girl's mother and then turn her into a demon for trespassing and trying to get her back. The music needs to match that. It's a dark and sad story filled with mystery and danger, but at the same time, it's beautiful and mysterious. Those are the feelings that Electro Bear's music invoke. So Momodora 2 is where the game really starts to develop its own personality. Gone are many of the cave story elements, instead replaced with mechanics that will help define the series as its own. Gone are things like save crystals, instead replaced with shrine bells that you can ring to save your progress. The worlds themselves are less cave-centered and more mystical lands which visually are just much more appealing. There's a wider variety in enemies and they feel closer to the religious themes that the series centers itself around. The game still suffers from the occasionally poorly placed platforms and weird spikes in difficulty but the developer was still relatively inexperienced at the time. Given that, I think that this game is extremely impressive. Again, this game is absolutely worth playing and given that it's free, you have nothing to lose by trying it. Next up is Momodora 3. Ardine is now going under the moniker of Bomb Service and released this game through Steam on July 1st, 2014. This game was the first one to cost money, coming in at a whopping $2. This game is literally undefinably more expensive than the first two iterations in the series combined. I'm not sure how the developer thinks they can justify such an extreme price hike, but let's find out. This time around you actually have the choice of two different playable characters. Isadora from Game 1 and Momo from Game 2. As far as I could tell, there was little difference between the two except for visuals, so it's really whatever you want. Being that this game was actually on Steam, for the first time in the series we have menus and native controller support. So already, it was worth the $2. Momodora 3 ditches the map and much of the backtracking and Metroidvania elements, and instead goes back to a more linear style of gameplay. Although you can now warp from area to area using the shrine bells. What you can't do is hit the bells with your leaf to save. I don't know why, but hitting the bells with the leaf is the most satisfying thing, so I was a little sad to see it go in this iteration. Momodora 3 introduces the trinket system to the game. We keep the primary melee, secondary projectile combat that was introduced in the second game, but this time around you can collect trinkets to use as passive upgrades along your journey. Most of these must be found through exploration, but some can be bought at shops. You can have three equipped at a time, and items range from a one-use fairy and a bottle heal, to projectile bonuses like more damage or poison effects, or a defense plus ring, speed run rings, and even a trinket that lets you have a helper ghost. There is a lot of customization here and I found myself making tweaks to my trinkets based on whether I was exploring the world, or fighting bosses, or getting stuck on a platforming piece. 
Momodora 3 really steps up the boss battles as well. There are a lot more of them in this game, and they all feel challenging without being frustrating or unfair. Most will take a few tries as you learn their patterns and tells, but once you get them down, you get that total badass feeling. This is something that is very much going to carry over into Momodora 4. Overall, Momodora 3 feels like it's fine-tuning of many of the ideas that were introduced in Momodora 2. Taking a step backwards in level design, going to a more linear route and ditching the map, this game feels like it's going a little bit back towards its cave story roots. The music by Electro Bear remains on point in this one, and the visuals are better than ever. The visual style we talked about the developer finding in the second game is starting to get tweaked and fine-tuned in this iteration. The backgrounds and setting are notably much better than anything we have seen so far. Overall, Momodora 3 continues the trend of being an absolute steal, even if it cost infinitely more than the first two did. So finally, that brings us to the latest game, Momodora Reverie Under the Moonlight, or Momodora 4 as I will continue to call it for short. This game was brought to life through the help of Patreon supporters. Momodora 4 takes a huge leap from where we left off in Momodora 3. Whereas Momodora 3 helped fine-tune a lot of what had been set up, Momodora 4 takes a huge leap forward, expanding and perfecting many of the elements of gameplay. Returning to some of its more Metroidvania-style elements of gameplay, it also introduces a pinch of Souls-style gameplay to great effect. You get health potions in the form of these bell flowers, which replenish at every save. And speaking of saves, you can ring the bell again! 10 out of 10. Perfect game. Send it home, it's all done, We're, it's a wrap. Perfect game. There are so many elements that are even more impressive when you see where this game started. The enemy variety is hugely improved. There are so many different types of enemies with different playstyles in this version. In Momodora 1, we just started off with enemies that stood still and threw things at you, but in this game you have to use various moving mechanics, dodges, and parries, and all sorts of stuff. Plus, the boss battles are all perfection. With new music by Notorious Knave, the sounds have taken a shift from the chiptune style to its haunting orchestral pieces. As background music, they're wonderful at setting the moods and tones we had talked about earlier, and during these boss battles, they turn it up to 11. Some of my favorite tracks are during these fights. I mean, just listen to this. The combat system has kept the basics and expanded on those greatly. Your melee combat now has a lot more depth to it. Attacking forward now does a 3 hit combo, while striking from the air does a more powerful single hit attack. Your distance attack has been replaced with a bow and arrow, and the trinkets are also back. But added to the combat this time are a few things. First of all, the double jump that you had to unlock in Momodora 2 is back from the start, giving you a lot more mobility options. There's also the addition of rolling to dodge enemy attacks which you'll need, as there are just so many more enemy combat styles you'll be pitted against. And with this roll, enemies that shield actually make much more sense than they did in previous versions. You actually have to roll behind them to attack them from where they're vulnerable. And finally, as I mentioned, you have replenishable health potions that can be used whenever to refill about a third of your health. There are also usable items that up your defense and attack to improve your combat. And of course, by now you've noticed the visual overhaul on Momodora 4. Finally, Momodora escapes the chibi-style character models that defined cave story style and embraces a larger and more detailed world. After six years, you can easily see the huge improvements from someone that already started off as a talented pixel artist. Momodora from the start has had impressive visuals that seem to improve with every iteration in the series, but the huge jump going to this game just blows me away. Every aspect of the visuals is just spectacular. Brilliant use of color to set the tones for every area. Detailed and unique monster and boss designs, it truly creates a world all of its own. It's one of the easiest areas where you can truly see the development throughout the series. But these improvements can be found in every aspect of this series if you look hard enough. So in conclusion, Momodora started off as an homage to Cave Story and grew into something entirely its own. With a rich lore, backstory, unique twist on gameplay, and a great art style that only belongs to Momodora. Like all games, you can still see its sources of inspiration, but it takes those and crafts them into something totally unique to itself. It's gone from a game that started as a love letter to an indie series, to a game that inspires other developers to make their own series. Up next for the developer is an as of yet unannounced 3D title. It's going to share some of the design philosophies behind Momodora, but it will not be an official part of the Momodora series apparently due to some fan criticism. 
most likely some fan outrage over the fact that the game was making a shift to 3D. Regardless of whatever they would like to call their next series though, I am personally very excited for it. They're seeking funding through Patreon to help develop this next game, much like they did for Momodora 4. If you're a fan of the series, I would definitely consider subscribing to them on Patreon and helping donate to the next game. If you're unsure whether or not you'd like Momodora, the first two were free and ready to play right now, also linked down below. The first three titles are short, but they're no less enjoyable for it. You can play the entire series for $12, and I really can't recommend it enough, so go check out Momodora, let me know what you think about it down below, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, consider leaving it a like, and if you're new here, consider subscribing for more. Hey, thank you for watching, as always, I love your beautiful faces, and I will catch you guys next time, hopefully. You wouldn't leave me here, unsubscribe to my channel, would you? Just hanging in the wind, making videos for myself still.